Hi everyone, we are here at Data Plus CI Summit uh, by Data Breaks. I'm super excited to be with Raymond from Coinbase and Sally from Como. Super excited to chat with you both about the partnership, but not only just that, machine learning, AI, data engineering, data, a lot of announcements that we've been you know, seeing in this space. Uh, super excited to chat about those things, uh, but just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us more about what you do at Co uh, Coinbase and what you do at Kumo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Raymond. Uh, I'm a software engineer on the machine learning platform team here at Coinbase. Uh, we help manage all the tools and uh, infrastructure required for enabling our machine learning engineers to uh, develop machine learning models across risk, uh, recommendations, all across Coinbase. Fantastic. Sally? Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Sally. I'm a machine learning engineer at the Kumo team, and we help our customer to use our product. Fantastic, thanks uh, for that quick introduction. I'm kind of also curious, and I'm going to jump right in. Uh, Raymond, uh, I know uh, you work in the enterprise, and uh, obviously you uh, learn and keep up with a lot of things that are happening in the space, in the AI space that is uh, moving so fast as well. Yep. Uh, what are some of the biggest opportunities and challenges you see developing AI and machine learning at uh, Coinbase? Yeah, so, I mean, as you know, there's a ton of things happening in the space. Uh, there's a lot of noise to navigate around, and um, you know, as an enterprise, uh, we have to really discern through all the different tools and you know all all the right. new advancements in the space. And so, uh, our mission at Coinbase is to provide a set of good tools for yes. our machine learning engineers to exactly. really drive value um, and. Uh, Basically, you know, we're constantly on the platform side trying to see, oh, how do we empower our machine learning engineers? Yeah. How do we get fresher data? How do we, um, uh, you know, develop more powerful models? And how do we leverage transformers? Um, mm. uh, there's a lot of sort of interesting use cases and we're only like starting to unlock everything. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, exactly. That's so true that you kind of mentioning about that, where you know the space is evolving very quickly. But then uh, enterprise leaders are very careful about what they want to, you know, obviously go, uh, try test, but also see what's like the best use case for right. uh, you know for you. It's Coinbase for other enterprise leaders. It's other places. Uh, Sally, coming to you, uh, what do you feel are like the biggest, because I know you've been talking to a lot of customers, you've been talking to uh, a lot of prospects, a lot of attendees here and other enterprise leaders as well. What are uh -huh. some of the challenges but also opportunities that you're seeing in the space when it comes to AI, machine learning, any thoughts around that? Yeah, sure. So we observed that two major pain points when it comes to machine learning. Yeah. The first is the cycle is really, really long to develop a machine learning model. Some Sometimes it takes anywhere from three months to six months just to productionize the model to do all different kind of iterations. So it's really painful and they want to have a solution that's much, much quicker to deliver value. Another point point is that sometimes after team working on the model for about three years, five years, additional gain becomes so much difficult to get. Sometimes the team work for like six months, three months, only for one percent gain. That's really, really painful and a yeah, waste of time. Exactly. I think those are fantastic points that you've mentioned and uh, definitely very much resonates with me even if, in, if I'm not an enterprise leader but I talk to a lot of those and they mm -hmm. kind of have like a similar sort of approach where uh, first thing they kind of also focus a lot on the value that they're kind of getting than the ROI that they are expecting. Raymond, what do you think about that uh, when you when you kind of think about ROI, when you kind of think about you know the, the whole implementation process but then start thinking about the ROI very quickly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our goal is to you know get to to maximize ROI yes. like as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, for a, you know a lot of MLEs, they you know care about you know the metrics, right? So yeah. um, how many ATOs or account takeovers have we uh, reduced uh, yeah. as a product of uh, perhaps uh, improving some of our models? Um, other things like how how much increased revenue have we uh, brought to the platform because we've, you know, delivered proper um, recommendations so based on yeah. um, what assets they've traded in the past, what they've looked at, um, and so for us, 
uh, really understanding ROI and just trying to maximize yeah. that value it's very important. is super, super important. And what we try to do is we try to cut through all the crap. Um, <laughs> we try yeah. to um, you know, really just focus on what we're good at. And what we're good at is taking the data, evaluating, you know, creating insights, uh, creating features. I love um, it. You know, using tools like Kumo uh, yeah. to train graph neural networks, um, so that we're able to predict, say, um, you know, whether whether uh, uh, there's one node that is problematic mm. in yep. in some way or a bad actor. And so, leveraging all these tools, um, just really, really trying to prioritize this ROI is really important. Very important, that's so true, and thanks for sharing that, Raymond. Uh, definitely, I think uh, for enterprise leaders, it's uh, the focus that they have, and if uh, that's the end goal about you know using it for these reasons, they'll just want to have tools around that and make sure that they're achieving those goals very quickly. So that's fantastic. Uh, one more quick question. Uh, obviously, LLMs are getting a lot of attention right now, but other than uh, what other AI technologies are you keeping an eye on in uh, that you think could be game changer? Any thoughts around that? Do you, do you Maybe Sally, you can go first now. Yeah, I can, <laughs> yeah, I can go first. So when it comes to LLM, a lot of companies are building AI agents, yep. but while they're building it quickly, they will come to a pain point. And the pain point is sometimes the AI agent need to be uh, powered by a predictive model. For instance, if you are building a sales agent, you want to know which leads are most likely to convert, right? Because you do not want to spam your potential leads. You want to know predictively who are likely to convert. So what powers that prediction is usually a predictive model. So I think something that has been like uh, go under notice is like how well your mm. model can power your prediction. So right. to build a great AI agents, we actually need great models to power our agents. I think Kumo is also great for that. It's like nice. if your agent, they can know like who is likely to convert, who is interested in what, your AI agent can actually deliver the impact you want to deliver. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Raymond, what do you think about it? Yeah, so the question was about what sort of technologies and yep. other tooling um, we're looking, you know. Other than, you know, LLM's kind of getting all the traction, yeah. uh, what do you think about in the AI technology, what's next that kind of will be the next big thing, yeah. or uh, where do you see the space evolving? Yeah, I mean, to, to plug maybe Kumo one more time. Yay, uh, oh, nice. You know, graphs are, are great um, for a lot of things, and, um, you know, we, so for context, we've recently onboarded onto Kumo as a customer a few months ago, and we're starting to develop our use cases. But um, actually, the crypto space uh, blockchain is actually a very uh, apt problem space for graphs. Um, yep. You have these massive amounts of data, these wallets, these um, transactions that can be modeled as edges yep. in between, uh, you know, different wallets. Um, and uh, there's many, many use cases across that you know graphs can can solve uh, for risk. Um, yep. And you know anti money laundering um, yep. on the recommendation side, and so all these uh, insights that we can glean from graphs, and um, you know we're, we're really, really excited with what we can do with Kuma uh, in the coming months uh, as we sort of onboard more use cases. That's a great one, uh, and definitely for uh, you know. Uh, that is where it kind of goes back to what we kind of discussed about as well, where uh, enterprise leaders are very smart in terms of what they uh, are looking at and what they're focused yep. on. And if Kumo is kind of doing that job for you, you'll definitely be working on it. And looks like you all are uh, pretty much into the game with Kumo and uh, yep. it's kind of helping you all to get to the next level as well. Yep. How right. do you feel about it, Sally? Because you've been, uh, I know you talk to a lot of enterprise leaders. Uh, how? How good does it feel to be, you know, in that space where you all have uh, such great enterprise companies that you all work with? Uh, but uh, do you think it kind of also validates a lot of things in this space? Yeah, I think it's actually very quite exciting for working for Kumo. You are kind of like giving out this superpower to yeah. our customers, <laughs> right? Because they can now build models so much faster than before. So previously, it may take three months, six months, a whole engineering team. But now, it's just like one week, one engineer, they can do the entire work. 
And also they are seeing much, much better prediction as well. Because like in the past, they need to work three months just for 1% gain. And now within a week, they have 10% lift, 50% lift, sometimes 100% lift. And you can imagine how much business impact they're delivering at their company, right? I love it. Uh, those are fantastic stats uh -huh. that you've yeah. shared. Thanks, Ali. Uh, one question for uh, you, Raymond, in terms of the ROI we were discussing about it that uh, when you all understand like, uh, okay, yours, the ROI that we've been kind of, you know, estimating, uh, no one can be sure about it, but uh, obviously there could be estimates in, uh, what's been like the biggest win, uh, say in the last two years or last one year, anything that you can share when it comes to AI? Yeah. Um I think uh, something that we've explored in the past few months are sequence features. Mm. Um, so uh, sequence features are basically uh, sequences of events. Uh, you can think of them as uh, think of them as sort of you know signing on to the Coinbase app and then proceeding to buy an asset, yep. sell the asset, yep. navigate uh, somewhere else to do another transaction. And um, we've seen very very significant lift. Uh, in adopting sequence features. Nice. Um, uh, and we're very excited to continue exploring uh, implementation across both risk and our recommendations. Um, yeah, we love it. Uh, uh, yeah. That is good in terms of the sequencing. So is it more like the, the experience as well that kind of comes into the game when you're kind of talking about logging in or buying in an asset? That is like a sequence uh, itself, right? Yeah, so th th that's a sequence in itself, which we um, build uh, using our uh, feature platform. Yeah. Um, our feature platform, uh, then what it does is it, um, you know, uh, passes it yep. along to the model. Um, and uh, from there, it's able to capture the richness of the, uh, the sort of user session. At the end of the day, that's exactly what a sequence is. It's just a collection of events. Yep. Um, we found that it's really uh, 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 been super impactful to the point where it really is in the top 10 features yep. uh, uh, with uh, respect to feature importance yes. um, that we yes. found. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, like, like we employ many different techniques. So uh, feature engineering um, with sequence features has been an extremely yep. um, uh, you know, useful tactic. But then with Kumo as well, we're able to uh, avoid having to do feature engineering as a whole. And that seems to be an extremely promising um, strategy as yeah, well. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, just on this itself, uh, one quick follow-up question. So how do you kind of, you know, keep the balance between the buy and uh, the build, right? Uh, yeah. That's something, you know, I kind of always love asking the enterprise leaders as well because sometimes building in-house can take a lot of time, yeah. a lot of energy, a lot of resources. And sure. if you fail, you have to just start over again yeah. or look out for tools then. Uh, so wh how do you kind of balance that out? Yeah, and that, that's a really great question and I think something that we've really thought a lot about. Yeah. Um, the approach that we've adopted is, um, you know, we are a small team of around eight platform engineers for all of machine learning at Coinbase. Um, we really need to do what we do best, and that's uh, really working with our MLEs, trying to help them, uh, uh, you know, on the platform side. Yep. And so, for us, uh, you know, the the logic is almost: should we put like an engineer, half an engineer's worth of time um, to build out, say, this? Um, for example, to leverage PyG and develop a whole framework, or is it better to leverage sort of the expertise of exactly. you know um, a a company? And so, uh, in the past few years, we've really adopted um, this uh, buy approach, and yes. Um, yes. it's really helped us uh, really, really um, have tremendous impact. Um, we're able to build a lot more, we're able to produce a lot of this ROI. Yep. Um, and yeah, it, it's just at the end of the day, like we do what we do best. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and we, you know, let the experts do what they do best as well. I love it. I love it. Uh, this is something which resonates with me very well, again, because I talk to a lot of leaders and they have kind of similar approach as well, where it depends on a lot of things. It's not only just about building it in-house, but the team size. Is it worth going in, you know, having so much of uh, energy put into, you know, resource that is available outside and we can fast and get our work done very quickly. So that helps a lot. One last question for both of you. If uh, folks want to reach out, learn more about what you're doing at Coinbase, just follow your journey as well. Uh, which is the best place? LinkedIn, X, what's best? LinkedIn is perfect. Um, yeah, I'm active. Okay, awesome. You can follow Raymond on LinkedIn. Sally? And also follow me on LinkedIn for new Kuma updates. Awesome, this is great. Such a pleasure chatting with both of you. Thanks for taking the time out and uh, appreciate all the great work that you all are doing. Thank, Thank you, Sally. You so Thank Thanks, you. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.